Hey everybody, this is my thoughts on Mirage Arcane Warfare. This is the follow-up of sorts to Chivalry Medieval Warfare, and it got its full release in May of last year. And there's a reason this is an MTO and not a full review. Unfortunately, the game is effectively dead at this point. I mean, as I'm recording this video, Steam Charts says the 24-hour peak was about 23 players, so it's pretty much impossible to get into a game with actual players in it, unless you actually deliberately organize something, or you just get really lucky. This is why almost all of the footage you're going to be seeing in this video is exclusively of me playing against bots, because those are the only times I can actually play the game. And the thing is, it's actually quite baffling that this is the case, because for a while they actually offered Mirage for free, and if you added it to your account, it was in your account forever. In fact, the absolute maximum number of players was well over 40,000, so it makes you wonder what actually happened to make the player base drop off so quickly. Well, part of the answer lies in the presentation being pretty unappealing to a lot of players, so let's go ahead and delve into that. It runs in Unreal Engine, and of course, it looks a lot like Chivalry in terms of its animations and such, being kind of sluggish and a bit awkward sometimes. But at the same time, they've gone for a wildly different art style that is inspired more by A Thousand and One Nights, and of course, that means that it's got this very fantasy, very, very colorful aesthetic going on. Of course, when you compare that to Chivalry Medieval Warfare, it's like night and day, because Chivalry had a much more gritty, realistic style to it, and that was just really off-putting to a lot of people. Thing is, that aesthetic doesn't really bother me personally, but the actual visual quality leaves a lot to be desired. It's just not impressive in the slightest, and when you compare it to Chivalry, it's really not a step up. In fact, in some ways, it's a bit of a step back, because the texture quality isn't quite as good. That said, they generally do have some quite nice environments going on, so at least there's that. And of course, it wouldn't be a follow-up to Chivalry without a pretty significant amount of gore in it, and that's certainly the case here as well, except that it's a lot more colorful and cartoony, and the blood looks like paint instead of actual blood. Again, that was really off-putting to a lot of people, but it never really bothered me all that much. The game is also quite a bit gorier than its predecessor, because instead of simply lopping off an arm or a leg or a head, you can actually pretty much blast enemies apart with your various spells in this, and chop them in half and things like that. It gets pretty ridiculous sometimes. So they have actually improved the gore system a bit, it's just that it's a lot more ridiculous this time around, although that certainly does fit a fantasy game a lot better than a more realistic one like Chivalry. That said, even if the aesthetics don't really bother you and the visual quality is certainly sufficient, there's also problems with performance. Now, I'm running a very powerful rig at this point, so I don't really have this problem, but I did notice when the game launched it had very significant performance problems, where it would just randomly tank the frame rate for no discernible reason. Now, of course, between the time I played the beta and now, I have replaced my graphics card, so that may have some pretty dramatic effect on the actual performance I get, but as far as I can tell, it does seem to have been improved at least somewhat. There's also considerably less graphical glitches I've noticed in this than there were during the beta and, of course, when the game actually launched, so there is that. But once you move past the visuals, you find that the sound design leaves a bit to be desired as well. Now, you do have some nice meaty sound effects that when you're swinging your sword or your axe or whatever it may well be around and smacking enemies upside the head with it, you're getting some very meaty, gory sounds that really do fit the combat quite well. And of course, like in Chivalry, there's a lot of blood-curdling screams and horrible gurgling noises and such like that that you get whenever you're eviscerating your opponents, so that's always nice to have. It makes the combat a bit more visceral and satisfying. That said, there is an oddity where if you behead an enemy, they'll still scream anyway, so I think that's just an audio glitch, but it's still kind of goofy. So at least in terms of combat sounds, they've done a decent job, it's just that the music is extremely underwhelming. Not to mention the sounds when you're slinging spells are rather wimpy, and that's really where the big problem with the audio comes in, because when you're running around swinging your sword or whatever, that sounds nice, but when you're trying to throw a spell at somebody, even if it does a lot of damage, it doesn't sound like it does a lot of damage. And that just ultimately becomes a bit disappointing, and thus you end up with sound design that just leaves something to be desired. So the visuals are a bit off-putting to certain people, and the sound design leaves something to be desired, but those really aren't game-breakers for most people, so it really falls to the gameplay to bring things up, because this is a multiplayer game without any real story. 
So what do you actually get in the gameplay? Well, you do get the chivalry style melee combat system, which means you have thrusts, overhead attacks, and then horizontal attacks, and you have to chain those together in order to defeat your opponents. It is, of course, a system that does require some skill to be good at, but at the same time, it's really not an improvement over chivalry. In fact, it barely even changed at all. The only real difference is that it's a bit faster paced than chivalry was, which is certainly appreciated because chivalry could get rather sluggish, but at the same time, we were really looking for more improvements, some additional mechanics, or making it more skill-based. That's not to say that they didn't introduce new mechanics, it's just that they didn't improve the melee system at all, which was very disappointing for a lot of people. What they did introduce was a series of abilities for each character class. So unlike in Chivalry, in this game there are actually six different classes you can choose from. The Alchemancer, the Torrent, the Vigilist, the Vipress, the Entropist, and the Tanker. Each of them have, of course, their own set of weapons and their own character customization options that are all cosmetic, but they also have their own selection of special abilities that you can choose whenever you select your loadout at the beginning of a match or whenever you want to change your class later on. To give you a prime example, the Alchemancer is basically the game's ranged class, and in addition to being able to select between a melee weapon or a ranged weapon as your just normal attacks, you can also choose between a set of abilities that include things like basically a bolt of magic that will do quite a lot of damage, as well as being able to call down fireballs from the sky for a, an area of effect attack, or even being able to sprout wings and fly around the battlefield for a short period of time. These various magical abilities that make it the arcane warfare as opposed to something that's more realistic like chivalry. The problem is that no matter what your loadout is, you only get three abilities and each of them is on a cooldown as opposed to having limited uses or being able to use them very, very frequently. And while you can reduce the cooldown by collecting pickups dropped by killed enemies, there's really not much to it other than you cast the ability and then you wait for quite a while for it to regenerate and in that time, I'll all you're really doing is running around smacking things with your melee weapons. The only class in the game that actually has ranged attacks is the Alchemancer, and the magic bolt that the Alchemancer gets is pretty pathetic. Not to mention that all of the projectiles in this game can be parried, so it kind of becomes pointless to use the ranged attacks. And none of the abilities that the Alchemancer gets are really all that useful as well, because really all the damaged ones can be parried or avoided with extreme ease. This brings up something that's very important to mention about Mirage Arcane Warfare. It is not remotely well balanced. With a selection of only two abilities per category in most regards, with some very few exceptions where they do have three abilities per category, there's really not a whole lot that you can do with the various loadouts. And this being a team-oriented game, this means that there's actually a bit of a gap in various abilities. So, for example, even though certain classes do occupy certain roles, like the Taurus being kind of the line breaker or the Tinker being kind of the trap-laying support character, none of them are particularly necessary in order to win. It's really better if you just pick whatever you're good with and just stick with it. Even the healing abilities that the Entropist gets really aren't all that useful because after a while of just not being in combat, Combat, your health starts to regenerate anyway. And the Entropist's other abilities really aren't very powerful, so it really falls to his offensive and defensive capabilities, both of which are rather weak because he's a very large target with slow weaponry. So right off the bat, the poor balancing of the game makes two of the classes effectively pointless to play, and then the rest of them have a decent variety of abilities and offensive and defensive capabilities, but with those it just comes down to personal preference, there's not really anything that's going to make you want to play one class over another in those particular cases whenever the team play is concerned. Then once you move past the poor balancing problems, then you end up with the rest of the gameplay just being really lukewarm. The tutorial doesn't really do a very good job of teaching you how to play the game, and once you're actually in there playing it, you find that the objectives are very simple. They're usually just capture a glyph or maybe move an arc to a location, in which case it'll win you the game or it'll move to the next stage. There's also a basic deathmatch mode as well as an arena mode for 3v3s, which consists of just a basic elimination format where there's no respawns. And while all that certainly suffices for basic objectives, the actual team play involved is fairly minimal and the maps are relatively small as well, so you don't really get a lot of opportunities for flanking or complex maneuvers. 
All of that on its own would just make this a very wimpy experience overall, but then they had to go and actually make it a follow-up to Chivalry Medieval Warfare. Keep in mind, Chivalry was released five years before this game was, and basically nothing has improved since then. The combat system is almost exactly the same as it was in Chivalry with the addition, of course, of the various special abilities that the classes have, none of which really add all that much to the game to begin with. The ranged attacks and the magical abilities are all extremely underpowered compared to just running in and swinging your melee weapons around, making the magic system in what is supposed to be arcane warfare really pathetic. And when you factor in a really shaky launch with a lot of technical problems as well as various issues that the servers were having, the game pretty much failed right out of the gate, but then they tried to salvage it. Of course, they put out a few updates and they released the game for free for a limited period of time, where if you added it to your Steam account, then you could keep it in that library forever. That got them up to about 40,000 or so players, which you'd think would be actually a really good thing, except that now the game is effectively dead. Meanwhile, Chivalry certainly has a small player base, but it's still going just fine. There's still quite a few people playing it, and it's not at all difficult to get into a game with actual players. They did eventually introduce bots into Mirage, but unfortunately the AI is ridiculously dumb, and half the time it's ridiculously easy for even a single player to just completely defeat the AI by themselves. Of course, that's assuming you're on a map that actually allows the AI to function, because there's actually one particular map where the AI does not work. They just stand in the spawn and do absolutely nothing. So even though the bots do at least let you play the game now that basically nobody else is actually playing it, they are really not a challenge at all, and you don't really get any of the satisfaction out of the melee combat system. And when you bring it all together, you end up with something that is completely impossible to recommend. I mean, I mean, they haven't even had any real major content updates since the game launched, and there's only about five or six maps in the game to begin with. Or at least that's how many maps I noticed while I was playing the game, and I actually witnessed the full server rotations of several servers, and it still didn't get any more than that. And thus, without any major content updates, even though the game did go free for a while, and even though it is now at a considerably reduced price compared to what it was before, there's absolutely no reason to play it. Once a multiplayer game loses its player base like this, there's really no coming back from that. And it's a real shame, because the game did have a lot of promise, it's just it didn't deliver on any of it. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you all in later videos.